Hi YouTube, Neil here with Face Shift Interiors. Welcome back to our channel. Apologies for the delays in the videos recently. We've been dealing with some technical difficulties, but thank you for your patience and this is our new video. In this week's video, we're gonna be showing you how to reupholster a tub chair. I'm not just showing you how to reupholster because we've shown you that many times, but this video, we're gonna show you how to, if you'll be doing a tub chair from scratch, how you would mark your seams out. So 10 times out of 10 with a tub chair, you can't use one bit of fabric because it has to curve. So you need to put nice seams in it. So in this week's video, I'm gonna be showing you where we put the seams, how I do it and how I mark them and how I make them exactly equal and we're going to show you the same on the back as well because once the seams are on the inside back you want the seams on the outside back to line up perfectly I'm going to show you how to do that in this week's video so in this week's video we're going to be showing you how to reupholster next week's video we're going to show you how to cut and sew the cushion for the tub chair because it's, it's not a square cushion that we've shown you before it's a round cushion so we'll show you how we do that next week as always if you like upholstery tips and tricks don't forget to hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell as well to make sure you know when all new videos become available also don't forget to follow us over on instagram as well we do a lot of our finished work on there and just general stuff and it's there so let's get into this video this is how to reupholster and mark out your seams for a tub chair action howdy partners right so in this week's video we are going to be reupholstering this guy i normally describe sofas as women i normally like isn't she pretty this one we'll call a man and we'll say isn't he handsome Right, so um, as you can see, tub chair. We've already taken the legs off, so excuse that. Right, so I'm gonna take this cushion off. So right, the first thing I noticed is, when you're doing a tub chair, you have these seams that go in like this. These ones, they look like they're not straight at the moment. They're quite bent. I'm gonna redo them. Also in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make, or how I do it, how I make my templates for a back like this, because you need to come over here and then also on the back so as you can see here hopefully I'm not sure if you can where this join finishes over here this seam is here miles away that's an inch this is not good quality this is very bad quality so we're gonna rectify that we can't be doing that if you're doing high quality furniture you cannot be having seams that don't line up I'm gonna start stripping this down and showing you how we will upholster this so I'm gonna show you how we cut it so we'll cut that back panel and we'll also show you how to shape it here this bit is stitched up but we'll probably we might hand slip this or we might just do a real nice tight pleat. We might not need to stitch this. I'd like to leave this nice and long. The seat we can probably change as we don't need all this fabric in here. It's got a cushion. So let's start taking this chair apart. I think the seat is detachable. The seat's separate, which is a good thing. That makes it easier for us. Yep, see the webs there, are quite soft. So we're gonna show you how we go about this. Uh, there's a beautiful fabric to put back on it. Absolutely bloody beautiful. The customer's chosen a fabric called Vir Viridus Teal by Romo and it's one of the black edition velvets. It is stunning. It's kind of like, not like a dip dye, but like randomly sprayed teal. So it's gonna look, it's gonna look beautiful when it's finished. Right, guys, as you can see, we have the seat. Now, when you're reupholstering, you shouldn't just throw fabric over the old, the old stuff. You need to make sure it's structurally sound as it's your name against it and it needs to be stronger. So you can see that they're, they're quite soft. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run some webs in between these ones. So we're tightening this seat up really well. We've got over and under on this one. There's a bit of hardwood at the front, so that's what I'm pulling that back for to get to that. Pull back nice and tight. And as always, you should always protect your webs with some hessian. So, what you can do is double up as well. Make sure it's extra strong. Right. So here we go, there's the seat much stronger now. So now we're gonna do the back. I'm just gonna take this side off. Right, so as you can see, so what we're gonna do guys is we're gonna take all of these out and replace them with new ones. C 
see what they did. They used the stretchy ones here and then where the body doesn't really go, they've just used the cheap web. So what I'm going to do now guys is I'm going to put a few more in here then I'm going to put a hessian line in inside then we can put the foam back down. Right guys I'm just going to show you how I go about templating a back. So I've cut a bit of fabric, just a lining fabric. So what I've done, I've done is I've pulled up to the back and I've stapled off at the back. Then I'm going to staple down at the front. Now that should be halfway. So as you go around the curve you'll notice all these creases. So all I'm going to do here is guys I'm going to go, I'm going to do half and half. So that's halfway. And up here, I'm gonna mark on the center of the frame, halfway. So now, I'm gonna start cutting into here. See there, literally as I've cut round, I've been able to clear out those, those creases. So I'm just gonna keep going up here, pull that round. So again, I'm cutting in. So as you can see there, there's no, we've got no sort of creases here. There's a couple down here, but we can staple them off as we come round. Stick a few more in there. So the reason I'm doing this is on a tub chair, you can't just use one long continuous piece of fabric as there will be ripples. So here I am just working out where my seams are going to go, making sure they sit nicely in a nice position and making sure that your fabric doesn't get rippled up. And here I am using my piping cord to just look at where my seam needs to be sometimes i sort of put it on and i step back and i have a look at it from a distance and say that looks right and now i'm using a pen stapled the, the piping cord on and now i'm using a pen to mark where my seam is going to go right guys so as you can see We've laid our other fabric on top and you can see our piping cord there. So I've got rid of all of this. There's a, I mean, there's just a couple of bits here, but I can get rid of them. They'll come down. So what I'm going to do now is just mark against the piping cord my second panel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark, make a mark there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut half an inch away. So I'm just going to chop this excess fabric away here. We don't need... So now I can carry on cutting down here, half an inch away from my seam line. Now we're gonna take this off, copy it onto our fabric. Right guys, so as I explained, here is our template. I don't know if you can see our marks on here. So that is our, that's our halfway mark there. Here is our join. I'm going to cut half inch away from there and then I'll center mark at the top. So now I'm going to roll that onto the fabric, cut it out and then I'm just going to cut halfway, fold it over and copy it. So I'm going to put a little nip here as well because that is where it joins onto the other fabric where we've marked before. Right so that's our half. So we've got our mark in the middle there, mark at the top. So now we will just Right, so that is our middle piece. So now we're just going to cut our two sides. So now I'm going to sew these bits up guys, so that nip meets up with that nip, so I'm going to sew this on. So we've now put our Dacron on, now we're going to start putting our fabric on. We're going to start working our way around, I'm going to start at the back, put a staple in in my middle nip and put the fabric where I've marked it. So now I'm going to come down to the middle, so I'm going to roll this chair back. 
I'm going to come down. So that is where we need to be, just there. Let's push that down a bit more. So I'm just going to put temporaries in. So I can take them out if I need to. Now we've got our first two staples in. So middle and bottom. So now I'm going to start working around. Right, so I'm just going to start, move that out of the way. I'm just going to start working this bottom round. So what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm working like it is. I'm working the fabric around from the middle, getting it out. What I've got to make sure here is I've got enough at the bottom to go round. So what I'm doing here is I'm working my fabric towards the front. So I'm pulling it forward, making sure it's nice and even, there's no ripples or bumps. Now I'm going down towards the bottom to make sure that we've got enough fabric to go round the bottom. Making a little pleat. Now I'm going to start working my way up and then we will do our pleats on top of the arm. So now we're working our way up, we're pulling our fabric up as tight as we can because that's how we want it to be. You don't want it loose, you need it nice and tight. So now what I'm doing is I'm pushing all the fabric in that I don't need and checking how much I can get rid of. Then I'm putting some staples in to hold it in place. One more staple and now I can see how much fabric I need to get rid of. So using my scissors I'm cutting away all the fabric I don't need. You can see here how much I'm cutting out, getting rid of all that. Now you just dress it nicely, make sure it sits bang on the corner staple it off so what we're on to now guys is we are onto our outside back all we're trying to do first is tighten this up as it's all a bit loose so we're just releasing it so what I'm doing now is really tightening this up because you want a nice solid outside back nice and strong so I'm just tightening this really really tightening it right so I'm going to show you how to do a template for an outside back so what we're going to do is get our lining fabric so we've got our lining fabric and we are going to we're going to temporary this on just temporaries so they're not all the way in Now, as you can see with this shape of chair, if you've just done a straight bit of fabric, fabric would just kick up because the way the angle at the back of the chair, the fabric would end up up here and you wouldn't have enough. So this is why we need to do a decent angle template. So what you want to make sure is your fabric's nice and flat. You don't want it all ripply or anything like that. Now we can probably get rid of a load of this. Right, so, so there is our seam line there. So put a temper in there, this side. So you can see there we've put a temporary line here and then on the bottom, there's far too much fabric here, let's get rid of some of that. So I'm just going to put a bit of glue there, just to sort of hold that in place. And don't forget this side as well, we've got two sides to do. With the inside back, so we've done half and then we copied it. But I'm not going to do that because just in case the seam didn't go on 100% straight, which it should have done, but just in case it didn't. So now our lining's on. And you know that we've got our mark here. That's where our seam is. We can pull that back and check where our seam is. So it's right there. And then we've penciled at the bottom where we want to finish, where we want our seam to come down and a nice straight line. So we'll do that with a ruler. Um, I've also penciled around the bottom to know where the bottom of the chair is so I can add on 
a couple of inches extra. Now again, so here, so we can pull back and see that our seam is there. And then we want to come down, fill here as well where the wood is. Same on the other side, that's exactly where we want to finish. We can fill where the top of our chair is, so we can run our pencil around, around the top like so. We can add an extra inch or so to the top. So I'm just going to cut this off now. All this excess we're not going to need. So now we're going to do our side panel. So you could get yourself a ruler, sort of line up where your join's going to be and sort of run that down. So hopefully you can see there our join. So now we need to do our, our next piece. So what I am going to do is I'm going to use this seam here. So I've got on this bit of lining, I've got uh, a selvage. So I'm going to use that to run it alongside. I'm just going to put a staple up here, a temporary. Then at the bottom as well, I'm running right next to the line. Temporary in the bottom. As you can see there, we're sort of going up with the fabric. We're not coming straight, it goes up. So then you sort of want to get the rest of it temped on so it's not going to move. You want to do this fairly tight as well, guys, because you don't want to have any excess anywhere. As you can see there, our panel's on. So now we can just simply run a pencil round and there's a lip marking along the bottom as well. And as we get to our join, so I know there that I can add half, so I'm just going to mark here, add half inch onto this selvage because I've run this right alongside. Then do a mark there and a mark there. So see I've marked on both bits of fabric. I can do a couple if I want, another one here and another one here. Just so I know, when I sew that up, I want all them lines to line up together. All I've got to do is cut this, cut this off now. So add about an inch all the way round, I would. So yeah, that is how you do a template for a curved tub chair outside back. So now we can take that off, transfer it onto the fabric, cut around it, and we know that it's gonna fit. So right, we're cutting out our templates now for our backs. So this is our middle. I'm going to flip that over and do the other side. What we're doing is here, we're cutting our piping cord to go around our outside back. Right now, guys, we are fixing on our piping cord. Right, so now we're just putting our gripper on. Gonna start working our way around. So now we're going to put our glue on and then we can start doing some posh here. When you're doing outside backs, it's all about the prep work. Your metal grip has got to be good. Very important that your grip, metal grip is on right and is fixed on good. So what I like to do is I like to run my scissors along, oh, I missed, so I'll sort of glide them along the top of the metal gripper, being careful not to cut your metal gripper because that will ruin a perfectly good pair of scissors. Right, so this part guys, is where we have to be very careful because if we get this wrong, then all of our prep work has been for nothing. 
So I am just going to, because I know I allowed about an inch, so I'm just going to push that up, hold that in place, then come round to this join here. Alright, so now we've got our fabric joins in place. We're going to start tucking all this in around here. So I'm just going to start working our way around, flattening the fabrics. Fabric, shall we say? Fabrics. Just put um, the fabric in around the other side at the end, and I'm going to do the same here, just to hold it in place down here. So now I'm just going to pull this under here, put a temporary here. I'm going to pull that down here, get rid of all that excess. That looks good to me, so I'm going to push that up. Right, so again, I'm going to pull this down here, pull the excess out. Right, so as we come around to the side here, I like to pull it quite tight with my hand and then using my regulator to push it all the way in. And this is quite a good velvet to show you on because it's gonna mark quite well. So as we pull this out, you'll see our nice mark all the way up so we can follow that. So I'm cutting up my regulator line now that I've done with the gripper and the regulator. Now I'm tucking the fabric in using the regulator. Then I'm gonna push the metal gripper down. Nice and tight, keeps it nice and tidy. Hammering down the metal gripper with a heavy, heavy hammer. Right, guys, so what I'm doing now is I'm about to do the template for the seat. So as you can see, I've taken the old fabric off and it's got a shape here. So I've just laid this old fabric on here. I'm just gonna make a template. So I'm just following the foam underneath here. So that is our seat template. So then the rest of that is gonna be black lining. And then we'll put a label in the middle as well. So let's, let's cut that out. I'm gonna cut half an inch away for my seam allowance. All right, so there we go. And then we can obviously put a nip in the middle because that is where our label's gonna go. So we'll cut that out in a minute. One. And then here on this seat, we need to cut a border. The border needs to be, so I want to go a couple of inches above, so we go 11 inches. So get your soft tape and you want to come around the side. You want to see, you want to come to about here. So around the front, around there, 32. So 11 inches by 32 inches. We're going to cut this template out first. So I want it in the middle there of that dark line. And then it was 11 by 32. Right, so that is going to sew onto there. We're going to have to have a black lining on here. So right, that's going to sew along there with a label. And then that's going to sew onto the front. So let's go and do that. Right, so now we're going to upholster this, upholster. We're going to upholster this seat. I think we need to put another layer of Dacron on there. Just going to glue this on. Right, so. With our new Dacron on. What I'm doing here is I'm just going to put a temporary staple in the front, in the middle, and I'm going to do the same at the back as well. Just hold it in place so I can start working out from that point. What I'm doing here is I'm looking down my line, making sure that that's straight, making sure that my front is on nice and straight. And I've shown you before how we use our hand to roll that over like so. Still keeping our line straight. I'm gonna come around to this side, do the same. So the front's on. So we're just gonna get the back on, pull all the slack out. So I'm gonna pull nice and tight this way. 
Right, so what I'm going to do here is pull down. So that, see there, that's the top edge. I'm going to pull down nice and tight here. 